Hello, my name is Zach Gibbs and I'm a content developer within education services inside Juniper Networks. And today we will be going through the using interfaces with Security Director Learning Byte. All right, so here is our example. I want to point out a few things in the topology first. First, we have the SRX1 that is in the middle. That's going to be the device that we will be configuring using Security Director. And with that, we have the SRX1 connected to two ISPs. That's ISP A and ISP B with Gigi 000 and Gigi 001 respectively. And then we have the SRX1 connecting to the web server using Gigi 002. And then we have the SRX1 connecting to the user's zone using Gigi 003. Notice how in the user zone specifically, there are two users and those two users have IP addresses that are in the same subnet. However, the print server has an IP address that is in a different subnet. And so we're going to configure the interfaces to accommodate for that. So with the criteria for this example, we have Gigi 000. We need to configure that with an IP address of 10.100.100.1 with a slash 30 subnet. Then Gigi 001 with a 10.99.99.1 slash 30 subnet. Now remember Gigi 000 and Gigi 001 connect to ISP A and ISP B respectively. Then we have Gigi 002. That needs an IP address of 10.5.5.1 with a subnet of slash 24. And also we need to apply a VLAN ID of 100 to that interface. And that means that server will have a VLAN ID already applied to it of 100. So it'll be sending frames using VLAN ID 100. So we need to have the interface that is a part of VSRX1 also be a part of VLAN 100. All right, so Gigi 003 is already partially configured. And with that, we just have the 10.100 and 101 .1 slash 24 address already configured. However, we need to configure some additional addressing information for that interface. And we need to configure the 10.101.101.101 slash 24 as the preferred for that 10.101.101 slash 24 subnet. And what that means is that there's going to be two IP addresses. Notice how those first two sets of IP addresses that we have listed in the criteria for Gigi 003 are in the same subnet. So that means that if traffic needs to be sent from Gigi 003 and it needs to be sourced from that 10.101.101 subnet, it's going to use that .101 in the last octet to source that packet. Now we need to add an IP address that will allow the print server to communicate with VSRX1, and that is the 10.200.200.1 slash 24 address, and that's going to be set as primary. And what does that mean? That means that this IP address is going to be used by default as the source address when the packet transfer originates from this interface, and the destination address does not indicate the subnet. So we need to add that to that individual IP address. So that's how these interfaces are going to be set up differently and we're going to use security director to do that. So without further delay, let's go ahead and jump to security director and get this going. All right, so here is security director. We are in configuration mode and you might be asking yourself, okay, where do we need to configure interfaces? This is configuration mode. Let's configure some interfaces. And I wouldn't blame you for thinking that because that makes sense that you configure interfaces in configuration mode. But the thing to keep in mind here is that this is security director and configuration mode is specific to security parameters. And so with that, we're not going to configure interfaces under configuration mode. What we need to do is we need to go to devices and then we have our list of devices here. Security director is only managing one device. Typically, it's going to be a lot more than that in a production environment, but this is a lab, so we're only focusing on one device here. What we need to do now is right click on the SRX1, select configuration, select modify configuration. So that brings up the modify configuration window for the SRX1. And on the left, you'll see a bunch of different configuration sections and you see static routes, routing instances, physical interfaces. Eh, physical interfaces is probably going to be a good place to start if we want to configure interfaces, right? All right, so let's configure or go here to physical interfaces. And we're presented with a list of interfaces. So we can see our list of interfaces here. And so let's go ahead and find Gigi 000, which is just right here. Select the view configure link for 
the logical interfaces filled for this interface. And notice nothing is configured here. That's fine. That's what we expect. We need to click the Create button. And then we need to fill out some basic information. We need to first configure the unit. This is going to be unit 0. And then we can set a description. Also configure a VLAN ID. And we don't want to configure a VLAN ID for this interface. And then we can configure IPv4 or IPv6. Now that is important to know that you can only configure IPv4 or IPv6 address families using Security Director. Now, if you were to hop into JWeb or the CLI of this VSRX device, you'd see that there's some other options for families, such as family ISO, there's going to be family MPLS, family uh, Ethernet switching, things like that. So keep that in mind that with Security Director, if you're configuring interfaces, you're going to need to restrict that to IPv4 and IPv6 address families. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's expand IPv4 address section. And nothing's here. That's fine. Let's click the Create button. And let's type the 10.100.100.1 with a prefix of 30. And click OK. And then click OK again. And click OK one more time. And that configured Gigi 000. All right, so let's configure Gigi 001. Select the View Configure link. And it's going to be the same process. So I'm just going to run through this quickly. Unit 0, IPv4 address. Let's create a new one, enter the IP information, and the subnet mask. We'll click OK, and then we should keep clicking OK until we get back to the main physical interfaces configuration window. And then let's go to Gigi002. Let's configure that. Click Create. And this is going to be slightly different. Remember, this is going to the web server, so we do need to configure, oops, not the IP address there, the unit. And then we need to configure an IP address, and we set this to 10.5.5.1 slash 24. Don't put the prefix there, sorry. Uh, put the prefix in the prefix box instead. And we need to configure a VLAN ID as well. And remember that was 100 for the VLAN ID. And we click OK, and OK again. So next we need to configure Gigi003. So let's look Gigi003. And this is where things are going to get a little interesting because we have already configured 10.101.101.1 slash 24. So that's already there. Great. We need to add additional IP addresses and subnets to this interface. So you might think we need to add another logical unit, uh, but we don't. We already have logical unit zero configured. So we select this logical unit and then we click the edit button and select IPv4 address. And then let's add a new IPv4 address. And we want to add the 10.101.101.101 prefix of slash 24. And remember, we want to set this to preferred. And recall that this means that if a packet is sent from VSRX1 device to one of the users, that it's going to use this address instead of the other address we already have configured. And now we need to create one more. Let's click Create. 10.200.200.1 slash 24. And we want to set this as primary. And the interesting thing here, I do want to point out the, the help bubbles that you can hover over and get more information. So you can see with primary here, it says that uh, the primary IP address is used by default as the source address when packet transfer originates from the interface and the destination address does not indicate the subnet. So we're going to set this as primary. We're going to use this IP address if that situation occurs. So let's click OK. And you can see here, something I want to point out is we have the list of IP addresses applied to this interface with the logical unit 0. And we have the first one, primary and preferred is set to false. The second address, primary and preferred, is set to false and true. And the third address is true and false. So it gives you some information there. Let's click OK. And let's click OK again. And let's click the Save and Deploy option. That's just going to push out the configuration. It works. Great. All right, so that brings us to the end of this learning bite. In this learning bite, we demonstrated how to configure interfaces using Security Director. So as always, thanks for watching. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology-specific training paths. 
Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.